Hello everybody, this is Sharon A.K. Harris and I'm here with another wonderful class. And this one's, a, I'm gonna be showing you how some, to use some of these Delusions shimmer paints and they are fabulous, I'm not kidding, especially for the holidays. I'm also gonna be using a lot of the uh, new clear stamps they're coming out with. So you, these are a must have, but to do this technique, you're gonna need your black letterate pen. I found that the Shopee for some reason didn't work as well for me. I don't know why, but anyway, I'm using the black letterate pen. And I'm gonna be using this journal that is out by Delusions. And um, so, but I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is show you first. I'm gonna see if I can bring this up close to you so you can see what we're gonna do. So this is my Christmas potty. This is my um, office potty uh, little page of my book. And I, these are really cute, but look how, when I bring it up closely, look at all the detail, but yet it is just thrown together. And it looks so beautiful and festive, very easy to do. So on this one, I didn't finish it. I left it unfinished so I can show you how I do it. And those are the stamps. You can see this is unfinished. But we're gonna do the same thing uh, on a smaller scale to show you all the process. But I thought you might like to see this up close and see just what we're gonna get into. This is what you call super fun, super fun. So, okay, so I'm gonna put this down and get ready to show you how to do this process. I will be um, listing all the materials I use. So um, I'm just gonna call things what they are, but you know, I forget the names. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna use a craft tag just to show you how to do it. And I'm using a bucket of water here so I can, uh, you know, get things going. I got my cup of coffee, I'm all set, I'm ready to go. And I'm gonna use Delusions. Uh, some fresh lime. I'm using, all these are all shimmer paints that I'm using. I'm gonna use a dark green, which is called Cut Grass, Bubble Gum Pink. This is so pretty. And I'm gonna use some of the Pure Sunshine. I might use some of the Delusions paint. This isn't shimmery, but they, they're really good for um, brightening things up as well. And I'm using white which is not shimmery. I also have a spritzer bottle, uh, Ranger's spritzer bottle with water in it because I kind of like to make my paint move a lot. And we're just gonna get to it because I explain as I do it. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm gonna go into some of my, I got my Ranger brushes. I got a nice thin one and a couple of the bigger ones. So now we're gonna get going. And what I wanna do is start off with my light color and I'm gonna use green because I want this to be a Christmas card and um, and like I said this is exactly how I did the journal but all I do is I'll take a little of this green and I'm using the Ranger craft sheet and I really love it as you can see it's well loved because I use it all the time and all I'm gonna do is pounce on if you can pounce you can paint like this uh, zigzag it down just draw a line if that helps you. This is gonna be your Christmas tree, but I don't want you really trying real hard to make it perfect because it won't come out good if you do. So you're gonna be messy. Now I'm gonna take the dark green and put just a drop of that out on my craft sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna take the little green, the darker green, and I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna pounce up and back and forth. Zigzag, mess, make a mess. And I'm even gonna take my spritzer bottle and spritz the paper just a little bit. So it has, cause I want this to be really erratic. And also a little tip, spritz your paint, it will last longer. And I'm mixing them. Don't be afraid to mix paint, it's so fun and you get unique colors. And then I'm just dancing up. What I'm looking for is all these different colors, all these different values. I don't know, dirty brush, there we go. Okay, now back into my light green, and I'm thinking Christmas tree, but I'm not being perfect. I'm even maybe thinking presents under the tree, so I'll leave the, some of the area light. And uh, and I want it festive, so I'm gonna put a little bit of the, pure, 
pure sunshine down. I love this color. I'm going to mix it with the green. And look at that beautiful yellow. It does look like sunshine. It's also very festive. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm, I'm thinking about how I'm going to put this uh, stencil. So here's my stencil. I'm going to probably put her here. So I want to make sure that I have room here for decor, basically. And you don't have to put her dead center. You can put her on an angle because this is festive. I'm thinking angle on this one. And, and I'm going to have like Christmas balls here like I did in the other picture. So what I'm going to do is go into my sunshine yellow and throw some Christmas balls. Now these colors may change. I don't know. I'm throwing little dots on my tree. I don't know. I'm putting a little more water on my brush and just throwing some dots. Let it melt around. We'll throw some dots out here. Let it fade. See how, because I spritzed it with water, they're fading out. I love that. Now, if, it, if they're not fading enough for you, just take your spritzer bottle and just give it another spritz. You can just kind of dance around on them a little bit. Okay, now I want to get a little darker. And again, I'm bringing my design down and I would like a DACA underneath her, and I'm thinking also maybe a poinsettia bush to go in front of her. So what I'm going to do is throw some DACA green in here and just get some value change. Because she's the center of interest, and I know that I want her to be really noticeable. So I'm going to put a little darkness in this part of the tree. We'll have the light coming in this direction from the right in because this way I can control where I want the light in the dock. So just have fun with it. This is like not about being perfect. This is about just putting value where you want it and making things rough. You don't want it perfect. You want it kind of rough and looking scraggly actually. Now I'm going to put a little of the uh, bubble gum down here. Now you know that green and red makes mud. So what I'm gonna do is take a little of that red, dip it in my brush in the water, and put little pops of circles, little circles. And as this dries, it, it dries a little lighter. And I'm going to go for some more water, and I'm just going to make a little area here, like as if there's poinsettia bush. And all I want to do is add a circle. So you see, I'm not really being perfect. I'm just kind of nailing down value of colors. I know that I want this to be important because she's right here, and this is going to bring you right to her section. This will bring you up. I'm putting little Christmas balls in the background, some on the tree. And because she's going to be approximately right there, I want a big Christmas ball right here. So I might put a big one right in. And when you make a big Christmas ball, all these end up being small balls in the background. So and I'm just going to put some more spritzes with water. I love this craft sheet. If you don't have one, you use it definitely. Once you get it, you're going to see... This is something you need to have. Okay, I'm coming back down here with some of the docks. I want this to be good and dark. Now in your center of interest, you want things lightest, lightest, darkest, darkest. It helps people grab their attention and have you put it where you want. And now I'm just kind of floating this into the green because the green has pretty much dried up there. But it'll still dull in. But yet it's the background. And I'll put some more dark because this is super bright. This is duller because it's on top of the green and it pushes it back. So things work really nice once you understand theory a little bit more. But in the meantime, I'll show you how. Okay, that looks really nice. Now I'm gonna go into my yellow. And like I said, this is just regular paint. It's called Lemon Zest. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little of that on my brush and pop little dots of that inside of here. Because this is so juicy, it will diffuse and look really natural. Now, if you try to get things too tight, they tend to be not so realistic looking, believe it or not. They look more real if you make a mess. It's kind of like a Monet. You know, he wasn't very perfect. I mean, he made things kind of messy. Everybody loves him. Okay, I'm just putting little yellow dots down. I can go on top of it with gold, which is the... Uh, the yellow here. I'm calling it gold because it looks gold to me, but it's called uh, pure sunshine. So I can put that on top later, but I want this. This works like a light bulb for me, and it will make that even lighter when the colors go on top. And I'm just going to tap that dirty brush around here, and I'm going to leave that. I like that. That looks good. I might put a little bit of white putting a little white on my on my craft sheet and just having a few little dots of white in here. You can make uh, popcorn just by putting little strands on your tree. But you see how messy this is? And I'm using a good size brush, but look at that tip on it. It's really pretty good. For an inexpensive brush, these are really pretty good. And I'm just putting some of that. Maybe I'll even put a little white daub at the top because I'll put it like a... I'm just going to dab out a circle and just pull it out. Kind of give the feeling of a glow. So just a dot in the middle, pull it out. Don't be perfect. And now I'm going to spritz it even. So it will bleed a bit. If it isn't bleeding much, just use your brush. See how it just softened that pink in the background there of that, of that red? Okay, now I'm going back into the green. This is the lighter green, and I'm just tapping it in just to get more darkness so that my star will show up. It won't show up. See how light that is? It won't show up if you don't have some dark. So this will let you know that if you want something darker, people keep adding more dark, more dark, but you need to add light. And when you want something lighter, you keep adding more white, more white. And actually, all you need to do is add more dark. So think of the opposite when you're in, in need of a, an effect. Like I'm going to put this right underneath. This is very dark green. And I'm going to put that right underneath my uh, popcorns. Dab, dab, dab. You can dab. Dab, dab. Can you dab? I know you can dab. I have faith in you that you can dab. So just throw some dabs on there. That looks really pretty. Even without anything there, you already think that that's the popcorn because it's it's just going in that direction and it's dark. Okay, now I'm going to put a little darkness down here. Some leaves coming out. Poinsettia. And all this was was a big blob, right? You can make a blob. Raise your hand if you cannot make a blob, because I know you all can. Okay, so that looks really, really good. I'm liking it. Now let's put a little highlight. I'm going to take a little pink in the white. And what will happen is it, it'll stay shimmery, because the pink has a lot of, of uh, glitter in it, a lot of shimmer. And so I'm just lightening up one side a little bit. And I might do that to some of these others. I'll go a little more white. I can always go on top and add more. You can always go back and forth, but I want to add some balls on my tree. Just to get it that festive feeling. Okay, I like that. I'm going to use some of that yellow and maybe put another big ball over here. Not maybe as big as that one, but just something. And maybe a third one. Yeah, let's just make this one a little better. So it's three. Three is very pleasing to the eye. The theory of threes. Actually, almost any odd number really works. For some reason, our 
we as people love that. We love that um, unevenness. And sometimes I like to put one behind another. So I'm just going to blob some out, some out of water on it. And I'm going to blot. And look at I see one, two balls there. And then I'm going to soften this out. Just to give some color to the paper. And when I'm doing this, a lot of times the color of the, that it comes out will end up being more balls. And very festive. But just pouncing. You can pounce. The beauty of this comes after, it, uh, when we're done. It doesn't come with uh, the process. The process is not all that beautiful, but once it's done, it's stunning. Okay, I'm just gonna soften that back a little bit by pouncing on top, and I'm just using some of that yellow. Okay, that looks really nice. Now I can come back again with the green and some of that, the two colors of green mix and just kind of Make a little mess. I'm just looking for more variations of values. One more dark there. And I need this to be a little darker up in here. But I want them to know that there's little branches coming out. Maybe you can go over that ball. Isn't that pretty? Just put a little lighter green on top of it and it'll look really nice. You don't have to have everything like in front. You can, you when you put things behind things, they look really nice. Like in this one, we can put that behind that ball. And that looks pretty, very lovely. I just love Christmas. It's my favorite holiday. Other, the other holiday I really love is Halloween. I'm just a crazy person for that. I used to go to Salem before all this stuff came down. I used to go to Salem a lot for Halloween. It was such a great time. So now I'm reinforcing that star. I'm just adding that dot again and just pulling out. Pull, pull, pull. Doesn't have to be perfect. If it ain't perfect, it looks better, see? Now I'll even take some of that white and put some more on top of these just to reinforce my popcorn. You don't have to have popcorn on there if you want. You can make red berries, you can do whatever you want. This is just showing you the technique because this is really a fun technique. You could do this with your kids. Uh, it's really, really beautiful result. And I'm just adding popcorns. And maybe just, okay, that looks pretty good. Now I like a little highlight. So I'm gonna take just that brush Put a little highlight on my balls and all, I, all it is is a crescent shape that's it that's all you have to think of and you don't need to be technical about it you just kind of like throw it on there I'm not being real careful see what I mean it looks great again just white because I'm going to go over it a little bit with some more of that yellow and some of the mixes. And I can make a little shine, a little shine there, a little shine there. Maybe a little shine on this ball back there. I see another ball there. All I'm doing is giving it a hit. You don't have to get real technical. It's not, that's not how this particular painting is going to work. If it gets, too, if you get too tight, it just won't, uh, have that razzmatazz we want. I want that, I want some energy in this. I guess that's the word. I want some energy. I want this painting to say, you're at a potty. So there we go. Now I'm gonna use my smaller brush. I'm gonna get a little tweaky on it. I wanna make sure that this is a little darker back here because I know she's gonna go this way. So I want to make this ball a little darker just by adding a crescent shape again, but don't take it all the way. See, I've left that area. And I'm going to put this one. See, that? don't be careful. Just get that crescent shape. Boom. You can make a line. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a crescent shape. It just be a half circle. Just a line. See what I mean? I'm not getting really 
technical. Okay, I promise it's going to look beautiful. I'm just getting some value change again. I'm making things a little darker. And then on my poinsettia, I'm going to give you a trick. To make this look even more realistic, I want you to pay attention to this poinsettia. If you look really closely, you can see there's a triangle right there, a triangle there, and these are all a result of making a mass. You, it's kind of like looking at a clouds and you see the little things in the clouds. All I want you to do is look for points. I see a point there, and automatically it will turn into a poinsettia. And so you were really kind of painting with the universe. It's given us all this, just like when we look at clouds. So I'll turn this. You, you don't have to turn it, but it just works for me. I see a, and poinsettia is actually the, the shape of the leaf is a diamond shape. So if you can make a diamond like that see that come on you can do that you can make a beautiful diamond shape and you can make little leaves and just look for those points little point there little point here And you can even not even get that technical. You can just throw sh smash it down as well. Another technique. I kind of not, I'm a sketchy artist, so I don't like to get too perfect. <laughs> I, I just like that. That's just my style. If you like being really tight, that's wonderful. It's just a matter of what your style is. It's not wrong is what I'm trying to get at. It's not wrong. I'm going to take some lights and just throw some lights in here and mix in it with the pink. And just hitting little lines now. And that's giving me that feeling of a poinsettia. I'm not getting crazy about it. I just want to get that feeling, get that paint on my brush. I'm going to use it as a medium value between these Christmas balls. See how I keep going back and forth? Makes things move around. I'll even put one back in here. I think that looks pretty cool. Your painting will give you things as you go. Your, it's your choice whether if you want to use them or not. I'm going to put a little darkness right in here. A little half moon. Half moon. And a little half moon right here. Okay. So that's basically how I do my painting. Now... This is almost dry. I'm going to let that dry out and we will go, come back to this one in a little bit. I do want to add a little bit of green. This is bugging me. If you get too much of one color, I think you need to break it up myself, but everybody does their own deal. So I'm breaking it up with a little of the green because, you know, the poinsettias do have some green on them. Some of the leaves are all green. Some leaves are not that green. You can put little points on them. And sometimes I even like to... Bring a little bit in so that it's broken up a little bit. It's kind of interesting. And that's part of the tree and bring the tree in. So it just breaks up the poinsettia a little bit. It's not all like a perfect circle. So if you notice things are like always perfect in a, in a shape, and it's hard to get, believe it or not, it's hard to get used to doing that. But when you notice you're doing it, you can come back and uh, always add another layer. Anyway, I'm adding more white in the center because I wanted to break up and I wanted to um, get some new colors in it. I need to add some water to my mix and pop that in there because I want this to bleed a little bit more. So basically, the bottom line on this is let colors bleed. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Bring the color around. If you see a lot of color in one spot that it needs to be broken up, don't be afraid. You can bring other colors in. I'm going to bring some more light green into this. And so you can work on this as much as you want, but I'm keeping it really loosey-goosey. I might like this to be a little lighter because it's in front of a dark ball. So I want to make sure that that's lighter, right? If you want something to be lighter, 
put it in front of something darker. And I'm also seeing a spot here. I'd like a little darkness under here. Reinforce the dark so that my lights really pop. And right here, I want this darker because it's next to the light of the shiny ball. So then I put a dark next to that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm not sure, I might put a present here. So if I do, let's get a little green and white. Maybe put a little present there. And I don't want, so now I'm just taking water on a damp brush. I'm just pulling. And now I'm gonna blot it. See how it makes it all mottled? How beautiful is that? And then I might throw a little idea of a bow is gonna go up there. We'll do it later. Okay, so we'll let this dry. But you get the idea that everything needs to be mushy and uh, just kind of playing around and all of that. All right, we'll put that aside. Now I gotta tell you, this is uh, the Ranger craft sheet. Love, love, love this. I can't live without it. And I want to get, tell you about this tool they have. It's called the Ranger Scraper Tool. So maybe order one of these because look at this. comes right off. Anything left over comes right off. Boom. You don't have to sit there and scrub around. So that'll save you a ton of time. Okay, so now what I want to do is take this book over here. And... Okay, so now I'm gonna use my letter at pen, and this is where the magic happens. So basically I, I stamp my stamp where I want, and then I start to work on the design. And all I do is outline all of my items, but I do not outline inside of the stamp. It really makes the feeling that the stamp is color and I try to be sketchy so don't be perfect now this is a little ribbon I got going on here so I'm gonna and I don't look to be exactly on the money I do want to make sure that the ones that are behind are behind like that but I don't like to um, be real perfect it looks better like this to me. Sometimes I have to wipe my tip off. And then I just bring that down and follow the line. So you see how I'm already, look how much this is standing out now. And here's that other end. And I'm gonna bring this up. Now I would like this to have a prettier point, so all I do is bring the point up and just keep it sketchy and find your line and follow your line. And just follow your beautiful little sketch that came out as a result of, because none of this is really planned, it was a result of. Now I'm gonna put circles around all my balls and Really work on that. But like I said, you don't have to be really perfect. You just gotta be in the zone. If it skips, that's all right. Okay, so you see how this is popping out really nice. Okay, so now I wanna work on the tree a little bit. Let's put some of these circles around these balls. I like to make the circles around the balls because it kind of shows me where I'm going to have tree on top of it. So it's not always completely balls. As you can see here, there's a lot of balls. And then there's some balls with trees in front of them right in here. So what I want to do is now the tree. But you will find things as you're scribbling out. I kind of call this scribble art. It's a great way to learn that Working from the seat of your pants is really quite awesome because you learn a lot and you learn that you can see more in a painting when you're painting 
because you're actually trying really hard to look for value changes. And when you do that, you're seeing all kinds of things that you ordinarily probably wouldn't pick up ordinarily until you do an exercise like this. So this is basically a fantastic art exercise and to teach you to see. So not only are you making beautiful art, look at that, that is stunning. That looks really, really good. Now, like I said, I don't try to stay right on the line. I'm not gonna be like perfect. I don't care if there's a little glow around the edge. I think it looks really cool. Little dinky little hole there, I like that. Um, you can just jigger jagger and follow it around. Do you see a little leaf? You see a little something you like? Do it. But do you see, because I'm putting it here, his clothes end up being the beautiful colors of the background, which I like that. So when I outline things, it keeps him from owning it, basically. And I'm just scribbling, scribbling, scribbling. Now let's say you got, oh, look at that little cute little ball there. I didn't plan on that. No, it was a result of that water and paint moving. So let's say you had a big area that didn't have anything in it, like you overdid it. You can just stick them in anyway. Like over here is kind of overdone. So what I would do is I would do all this because this is all given to me for free. I'm just following the scribbles again. This could be another ball back here. I don't know. I like little spaces to peek through because it looks like you're looking through the tree. Looks like a little part of a ball. And then I'm going to scribble this in. The big thing is, is I want you to really learn to see. And I think this will help you all so much. And it's going to help with anything you do. I don't care if it's card making or what, because you, you're given stuff by the universe. And unless you notice to look, you kind of miss it. And it's like, wow, you know, that would have been great the way you had it. Oh, look at this little ribbon I got going on here. It's easier to pull towards yourself, but I don't want to move the book. So it's a little difficult, but I don't care. Nothing's perfect. I can even switch the side and switch the side again. And look at how it twists. How cool is that? And bring it down here. Let's put this little branch in front of it. Another little branch there. So don't be worried. This is a real... See, I didn't like that being on the end right there. So I came off it a little further. You can do that. You can do anything you want. I'm going to get that little ball in there. So this part here is the part I was saying that was a little over painted where the paint kind of like turned into one big giant blob. So what do you do? Uh, just wiggle and wiggle. And then you'll start seeing little value changes again. See how easy that is? Look at that. So if you're not sure what it is, just wiggle. And then all of a sudden, the lights and darks will start to pop out to you again. This one's going downhill, but I don't want it to go downhill. So I just say, heck with that. But I'll let this one be the uphill one. And a little value change there. Kind of a mess right here, so I don't care. I'm just going around the mess. I'll decide that it just could be darkness. So this is kind of like pine. Oh, I see that's a, that's a little light I got going on there. So I'm going to carve out this little Christmas ball right here. And the little hook. How cute is that? I wanted a Christmas present. So I kind of gave the illusion. There's kind of things in front. So I'm just scribbling along the line, but I can almost see my line here. So I'm just gonna give it a little line here and a little line there. And then I'll have a bow right here. I almost can see a bow actually. And then a little wrapping ribbon. And and put it down. You don't have to be perfect. Don't worry about it. It's like, oh, that's a little wonky. I don't care. I kind of like it a little wonky. This isn't supposed to be 
a photograph. This is really fun painting, uh, good for your imagination, good for learning. Look at that. Is that adorable or what? Now let's put some bushes back here, some greenery. It's Christmas. We got tons of greenery, tons of reflections. And I'm just going to scribble here because I have nothing here that I, I really is given to me. So I'm just going to scribble. And look how nice that looks. Scribble at. Okay, so here's a little, I got a little spray of of light coming off of that Christmas ball. And I really like it. So I just touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. And it looks like a little sparkle. Now I'm going to go back into my scribbling. And I want to make sure that that sparkles pop out. So I don't want to go over them. But I do want to go around all these scribbly areas. I think this one could use a little more scribble. This is the most important area and it brings you up into here and around. So I think that's a nice little design. Um, so I'm gonna, down here, this could be little leaves or who knows, pine needles. I don't know what it is. But when you start doing it, you'll say, oh, it looks like little holly leaves or something. Looks like a little sprig. It doesn't matter. People are engaged in your paintings more when things are there for them to find and figure out for themselves. And they'll know. Their brains will fill in the holes. It just works like that. It's nature. Let's get the back of that little ribbon. Okay, I like that. What is this? I don't know. A little reflection, maybe? But it looks so cool. Look at it. A little pine sprig or something. Okay, so that crosses over his foot and I don't want it to look like that. So what I do is I'll just wiggle, 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 scribble, scribble. Now it doesn't look like it's his foot anymore. Alrighty, now here's a little Christmas ball back here. And a little topper. And you can just put a little loop on it and there you go, you're all done. That looks cool. This could be a ball in the background. I'm not gonna do that one. I wanna leave some things to the imagination. I pick and choose what I wanna do. I do know that I like my center of interest to be very strong, which is right in here for this. And now I'm gonna come around. So this one doesn't need it because I'm gonna do a lot of work on the poinsettia. So I just wanna scribble. I hope you're getting the idea of this. You know, um, you can always text me and uh, I'm here live so I can answer questions. So I will answer everyone's question. And I'm also always here to help. So you know that. Okay, so you see how I'm darkening some of these lines to make sure that this leg looks like it's behind, these colors are in his pants. He's quite the festive dude. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this book a little bit so I can show you how I finish this up on this side. And then I'm gonna go back to the card should it be dry enough by then. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the poinsettia. Now with the poinsettia, I wanna be really careful to really get some of these little feelings of little budlets. So I'll make two out of one line. And I'll just go around this. Now these are the centers and they're lighter. And if it doesn't have a strong color change, you can make one, like I said before. So it doesn't matter. And sometimes I just make it right around it. I see there, I see there. Sometimes you don't see the color change until you put a little dark around one color. Then all of a sudden you'll see the color change. Another little hint. Don't worry, be happy. I love doing this. This is really, I gotta tell you, this is really calming and relaxing. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing it a little faster than I would ordinarily. I would just take my time, but I, you know, I don't want you to be bored watching me doodle all day, all the doodle day. Okay. But I want you to get a really good sense of how I do this. Cause it, once you got it, <laughs> Oh my God, sky's the limit. You can do so much. Look at that. Look at there's a poinsettia leaf. I see one there. I see one there. 
Look for points, remember? Points, right there's a point, right there's a point. So don't worry about it. This isn't rocket science, it's about fun. This one kind of comes up and over. And I see a point here. And remember, they're diamond shaped, so don't worry if you don't get the correct shape, if it doesn't always look the same, doesn't matter. Big trick is you want your points to be going out from the center. You don't want your points over here going this way. You want them to go this way. So look for points in that direction. And if you don't see the point, add it on your own, and this becomes another leaf. See that? Now I see a point. And bring that one right into there. Looks pretty cool, right? Okay, so this goes this way. I like that little green leaf coming out. I like that. I see a point right there. And there's another point here. If it helps you, just put your points in to begin with, maybe. I'm just trying to think of different ways to make it easier for you. But if you see a point, or if you don't see a point, but you know where one should be, just put it in. And then you can go and adjust things like that. See? So this one's uh, this one's going this way, but I really don't want it. I want it to go this way. So I'm looking for a point in this direction. So I, I kind of see one there. And now this one goes that way. And it looks more convincing. See how I can change it up? Big thing, point. Make sure you know where your points are coming from. And this one's going this way, but I really want it to come from the center out, so I'm going to go turn it <laughs> because I can. And we got so many lines on here, nobody ever knows the difference. Believe me, nobody's going to sit here and look for all your lines and say, hey, I don't see something there. They actually, I think they will. And then point there. And point there. I see a point there, I see a point right there. And like I said, they're diamonds. So watch for little diamonds, it helps you. And if you don't see one, throw it in if you feel like it. If not, like I said, just look for the points. It'll automatically happen. There's a point there. There's a point here, but I didn't want it to come out from the center, so I'll bring that down a little bit more. <laughs> See how easy it is to change your mind, but yet nobody will ever know. Okay, so there's a point here, but I don't like the way it was headed. I'm going to head it that way a little bit more. This one goes down. That's cool. And that one could come right up. It doesn't matter if it changes color because it's more of an abstract kind of a th thought. So I'm just, again, looking for points, bringing the point in because it's a diamond shape, right? And here's a point here. And bring it in. And bring it in. Look how cool that is. There's another diamond right there. Even though there's a line there, and I'm, I'm disregarding it, I like this little BB here. It's one of those little buds. You know the little buds that come on the poinsettia plant? So cute. Little flowers ready to pop. Okay, we're looking for another one over here, and I'm seeing the end there. Uh, I see one going this way. Not wrong direction, so I say I'll add one. My own way. And bring a point down. And bring a point down. And so the, basically that's all there is to it. Following your what the universe is giving you and maybe making a few adjustments, but you don't even have to. Let's just say I did all these crazy shapes here. It doesn't matter. It looks like there's more filler flowers. So don't worry if things, if you, if you want to just make scribbly or if you want to get a little more tight, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry at all. It just comes out beautiful. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. So I think we'll go back to the other painting and let's put this point in front of it. See how I can put something in front, even though I'm overlapping, you can do anything you want. The whole trick is to be, you know, confident 
and leave this whole area undone, okay? Now right here, because this is, um, I'm gonna really do a nice job right here. I want this to be really dark because this is part of the center of interest. This is what's gonna pull you through my painting. I'm always looking for things to pull you through. And that's why I outlined this star because it made this stronger. The little things over here, I don't want these to be too strong. It pulls you off the paper. So I'm gonna bring that around. And like I said, I would turn this ordinarily. Pull towards yourself, it's a lot easier. But And then don't be afraid, you can be sketchy. You don't have to make everything perfect. And it's more interesting anyway. And this one here, they don't have to be perfectly round either. Don't worry about it. Look how adorable that came out. Make sure you're in the view. Yeah. And I'm just finishing it up. Maybe a little ribbon here. I see there's a little ribbon. Put it in front, even though it's not there. <laughs> Put the little ribbon in there. And just bring it around, cross it over. It always looks convincing. It goes over and through his pants. It looks awesome. Gives people something to think about. But I'm not kidding. This is so easy to do and so much fun. So now let's go and finish up our other project. Okay, so I'm going to do a little topper on that and a Christmas ball. And a little line up. And that's how you do the balls, right? Just like we did. You can do a little line out the sides. And then our Christmas tree, we just, again, we just outline. And I'm not going to do it all because you know what to do. But what I wanted to do is just show you, and I'm going to leave this on here so I can, I'm going to stamp on this um, surface itself. So I'm just going to put the color, my black, I like the black, because black, there's something about a little black in a painting adds so much. Now, I want her to be sassy, so I'm going to give her a little, yeah, oh, that's what that would, that'll work. I'm putting her right there and rubbing it down. All right, and voila, look how lovely. Now, that's lovely. You know it is. I know it is. Okay, so again, you just wiggle, wiggle, scribble, scribble. And now for a little fast forward so you don't have to wait forever. So anyway, everybody, I hope this uh, was an idea. And I hope you try these Delusions shimmer paints. They are like unbelievable. Uh, can you see that? I mean, whoa. Stuff is really magic. It's great for Christmas. And, um, you know, I can't stop. This is the thing about doing this, guys and gals. You can't stop. It's so fun. I mean, it's so relaxing. It takes away your stress, your drama of the day. You can't think of other things. Although, you know, I, I think about painting, but... I can't think of other things when I'm painting. I'm too busy thinking about what I'm painting. So, you know, it's a really good for your mind. And uh, so anyway, till next month, I hope you enjoy this and happy painting everybody and have a happy holiday. Bye.